Hello everyone and welcome to a new video series. I'll be walking you through the mechanics of the bosses in veteran dungeons and hopefully this will help you with any bosses that are giving you trouble. So grab a drink, a snack, or something to take notes with and let's get started. Fungal Grotto is going to be the first dungeon we cover. It's located in Stone Falls on the far west side of the map in the Ebonheart Pact. For this run I'm going to be joined by T-Pain as our tank, Crush as our healer, Lita on DPS, and myself on DPS as well. So let's get started on this dungeon run. The first few trash pulls should give you no trouble. Just gather them up in a nice group and AoE them down, and take out any healers that there might be in the group. Um, they just tend to unnecessarily prolong the fights, so if there's any healers, take them down real quick, and then everybody else just drops like flies. Coming up here is going to be our very first boss, Mephala's Fang. This spider spawns with two healers. You're going to want to have the tank kind of move them back away from them. That way you and the other DPS can bring them down uh, relatively quickly. Nothing too, too hard there. And once they're down, you can start DPSing the boss. There are three mechanics you need to be on the lookout for as you're DPSing him down. The first and most obvious is going to be the pools of poison that he drops, as you can see right there. The second is not going to be as obvious since he won't be facing you most of the time, but it's going to be a clonal AoE spray that everybody needs to avoid, including the tank. The last one is he's going to attempt to feed on any fallen party members or, or on the healers that you just killed. So just bash him, keep him from doing that, and the rest should be easy peasy. Stay out of the red as much as you can, and if you happen to have ranged on you, it doesn't hurt to switch to that. It might make it a little bit easier, especially if you are very me melee heavy. But once he's down, you're ready to move on to the next boss. Moving forward, it's going to be more of the same with these trash pools. There's going to be some healers, take them out, AoE the group down. And now you're going to come up to your second boss, whose name I'm about to butcher, on. Gamni Bandu? I, <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's going to be your second boss. Now before the fight starts, you can see that I quickly slot critical charge on my bar. Now this is important because you're going to want to cancel out one of mechanics with a charge. So if any of you in the group, in your group has a um, charging attack, make sure that it is slotted because it's going to come in very useful. If you can, have at least two people in the group with a charge attack before this fight starts. And you're going to see in a second why. She's going to summon four shades that are going to hold down one of your teammates. Like that. This is where your charge attack comes in. You can cancel out this move by charging at one of the shadows. If you don't have a charge, then you have to DPS down one of the shadows. Otherwise, the person being held down will get killed. As you saw there prior to me pausing, I charged at one of the shadows. Crush went for a second one, and when it starts up again, you're going to see he went for a third one. It seems that attacking three of them it cancels out the mechanic completely, so that way your uh, bounty mate gets up faster and is able to help DPS down the boss faster. So it's up to you if you want to uh, attack all three, or if you just want to attack one and let the, um, the, the move expire on its own. Either way, once one of those shadows gets uh, hit with a rush attack, it's going to save your teammate and they will not die instantaneously. The next thing you're going to be on the lookout for is an orb that tethers you and another one of your uh, teammates together and you're going to see that come up in just a sec. Right there. As you can see her hands start glowing before she's going to throw this at somebody and it's going to tether like I said two of you together. When this happens, you and whoever's tethered need to move away from each other as fast as you can. Otherwise, it does uh, damage over time and it can kill you. So you definitely do not want to get caught up in that at all. Once that's done and over with though, she has one more mechanic that you need to keep an eye out for. And that's when she splits up into four shades, which you see right there. And there's nothing really special about this other than there's just four extra enemies you have to AoE down, but they're not very hard and once you get all four of them down she's gonna appear once again and from there it's just a matter of taking her down and she will basically rotate between those three mechanics. She'll throw down an orb, tether you, and you're gonna wanna get a far away from each other at that point, at least the two people that are tethered. She's gonna bind somebody, once again you need to charge at one of the shadows so that your teammate does not get killed. Again, optional if you want to take down three to just uh, end that mechanic a lot faster. 
and she'll occasionally switch out into four shades. She doesn't do that one very often, at least I find she doesn't. She likes to go between the orb and the, uh, the four shadows, binding a teammate a lot more than her splitting off into four. But she goes down rather quickly, and then once you're done with that, you can move on to the next set of trash pulls. Now for this third boss, whose name I will also butcher, um, Serena's the Shepherd. She is an optional boss to do if you are running the Vet Pledge. If you are doing a speed run, you have to get this boss down. Otherwise, you will not get that achievement. Now for her mechanic, the most important thing you need to do is not kill those three spiders when you first encounter them. I know in the video you're going to see us doing it. I'm going to tell you right now, do not do it. Um, because if you kill all three spiders, you're going to help her by increasing her attack damage and her defense. And it's going to be that much harder to take her down. Again, in the video, you saw us kill it right away. We think it might have glitched when we did it because we were still able to DPS her down incredibly fast. Um, when I ran it a second time um, the next day, that was not the case. So take precaution, don't kill the spiders right away, have the tank move them away, DPS her down, and then do the spiders, and you should be good to go. Now right after this next trash pool is going to be your fourth boss of this dungeon, and the one I find the most annoying, and that's going to be the spawn of Mafala. Now Mafala has two mechanics that make this fight very annoying, and I'm actually going to pause the video right here and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. The first and the most obvious is it's going to be the glowing portal she came out of at the mouth of that cave. The way my group likes to do it is we designate one of the DPS's to be on what we call cave duty because that portal is going to appear again during the fight and suck whoever is closest into it into another area. And now in this area you're going to have to AoE down some spiders and you cannot get out of it until all of them are dead. And then the portal will appear again and let you join the rest of the group. So you're going to want a DPS that's going to burn those spiders down as fast as they can so they can get back into the fight and help DPS down um, the spawn of Mafala. I know that some people are going to alternate between two DPSs going in because Mafala can sometimes randomly lose aggro when the same person goes into the cave twice. That is up to you if you would like to do that, but my group never does. We just deal with it. The second thing I want to point out is going to be the glowing orbs over the cave. Now, at random parts of the fight, a laser is going to shoot out of them, and it gives the group trouble sometimes. You have to be aware of every time the laser comes up because it can kill you in basically like one shot almost. So, anytime you see it up, make everybody aware and have just, just move around, try to avoid it as best you can. And as you saw there, she also does this AoE knockback. Um, you'll know it's coming because the front of her little hands there, her spider hands are going to start glowing. And that's your sign to get the heck out of there. Get as far away as you can from her. Otherwise, it becomes very troublesome if you get knocked back and then the laser lands on top of you. That's pretty much instant death for you right there. She also has a random knockback she does that's not... AOE related you'll see it's like this just glowing ball of purple that she'll, she'll randomly hit somebody with. It's very annoying you never know who it's gonna go on and again if that knocks you back and the laser just happens to be on top of you it's pretty much instant death. One more thing as I mentioned before some say that if you send the same DPS into the cave it causes Mafala to lose the taunt for whatever reason. We're not sure why. And the reason is probably debatable. Maybe it is something else that's causing it. All you really need to know is that it happens. And for some reason, the tanks tend to just have trouble keeping this boss taunted. Usually the taunt is lost after she does her AoE blast. Now, to deal with it, our tank uh, for example, likes to run two taunts, Pierce Armor and Inner Beast from the Undaunted skill line. Using one or the other interchangeably will return this boss to the tank without fail. The tank may stay in the AoE blast range of the boss, provided that they are blocking when it triggers, so that they do not get stunned. Now the damage that they receive from being in the blast is negligible at best, and you know, and if, as long as the healer is topping them off, um, 
they really should have no trouble staying alive in it. Um, it's only really a problem for the DPS and the healer themselves that if they get caught, they do have the potential of getting killed pretty easily, especially with that laser coming out and almost one-shotting anybody, you know, minus the tank. So just keep that in mind if you're tanking as something that you might want to do before you take on this boss. Other than that, when she's beat, you're ready to move on to the next section. Moving towards that next area though, you're gonna be in a hallway and it's just full of night blades. The easiest thing that we have found is to have the tank go in ahead, taunt them before the rest of the group goes through. It's just less annoying having to do it this way because otherwise if you all go in together, they will randomly just go on whatever group member and just stun all of you. And again, it's just annoying. It's not really that big of a deal if you all want to go in together and just AOE him down, however, that's perfectly fine. Um, like I said, that's just what we found to be a little more efficient, but otherwise, it's just night blades. They're not going to cause you any uh, big headaches or anything like that. So after you're done facing down the hallway of night blades, um, it's actually important that this hallway has all these night blades because they do play a, a bit of a role in the next boss fight, but you can actually completely just skip out on having to fight them um, by doing the following. So what you're gonna do is you're going to have your tank actually taunt Regar Dark Dawn and have him just go up to the stairs where you guys are just gonna sit at basically. You're not gonna do anything else. Um, your tank is just gonna keep him on those stairs and you're just gonna stay on those stairs and DPS him down. He's only got two mechanics in this fight that you need to worry about and that's going to be um, his kind of purple tethery thing he does. It's nothing very dangerous honestly. The healer is going to be able to heal through it very easily. His other little mechanic is going to be his whirlwind where he's just going to swing his hammer around and all you have to do is basically stay out of the red. Or if you, you know, if you have a really good healer, he can just heal through all that damage as well. But he's going to go down pretty fast, so there's nothing really to this fight other than taking him on the stairs and burning him down. Very simple. But once he's down, one of you is going to run down and you're going to destroy that crystal that's down there. And just be careful not to aggro those night blades because then that's just going to be a mess. Once that's done though, you're going to be on your way to defeating the last boss of Fungal Grotto. So for this last boss fight, you're going to want to stay on range DPS. So make sure you equip your bow and your staff, whatever it is you have, and be ready to take care of this last boss. Now for this fight, she does two things. First, she's going to start off by teleporting to one side of the room. The minute she does that, you run to the opposite end. Otherwise, if you stay where she's at, there's going to be this black gooey... It looks like it's goo, honestly. Um, but this uh, dark circle of energy. There we go. So this dark circle is going to start spreading out from underneath her, which is the reason that you cannot DPS her. You can't be in there for very long if you're not a tank without dying. So you're going to stay on range DPS the entire time. The tank is going to taunt her the entire time as well. That way when she shoots out her purple um, magic balls, it's just going to go all on them and you don't have to worry about it. The th second thing she's going to do is she's going to tether you with her magic, kind of like what the last boss did. All the healer has to do is heal through that, and it shouldn't be an issue. You do have the option, however, of going into the um, the, the shield, as you see over on the right side there. Um, but on the way shrine, there is a protective shield that you can go into, and you will avoid all damage of that magic tether. However, if you have the vet pledge, you cannot go into that shield. If you do, you do not get the gold key. So keep that in mind. If you're running the vet pledge, then you have to heal through her magic tether. There's no, no other way to do it. 
However, if you're not and you're just trying to complete this dungeon, then you can make it a little bit easier on yourselves by going into that protective shield and negating that damage from the magic tether. But that is it. That is the mechanics of this boss. When she teleports to one end of the room, you go to the opposite side. Make sure the tank keeps aggro on her. DPS her down. Heal through the magic tether. Or go into the protective shield. Granted, you do not have the vet pledge. But there's nothing really difficult about this fight. Unfortunately, I did die there at the beginning. Um, we had a little bit of a mishap when that happened. And once we recovered, though, there was uh, no other issues we had for going on from there. But there you go. That is uh, Villa Theron. Nothing very difficult. And you just completed the Fungal Grotto Vet Dungeon. So... Congratulations. And thank you for watching this video. We will have more videos covering other vet dungeons in the future. Um, slowly getting through some of those dungeons. But um, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you would like to see. Whether it's maybe the public dungeons as well. I hadn't really planned on doing those. But if it's something you would like to see. I will also start looking into getting the public dungeons done. Otherwise we're just going to cover pretty much all of the veteran dungeons in all three alliances. So keep an eye out for those. So thank you for watching. And have a great day.